Hi, I'm Paweł Spychalski and when you are watching this video, the INAF 3.0 official final release is already out. You can use it, you can flash it, you can fly it and most probably it's running just fine. As a developer and one of the major participants into the INAF project, I have to say that the INAF 3.0 is most probably the biggest INAF release we ever did. Uh, because not only we put a lot of new features and support for new stuff, but also this is probably the most the, the release that got the most help from people that are normally developing INAV. Really huge thanks to everyone who participated in the INAV 3.0, all those independent developers that take their time to propose new code, propose new feature, test and fix what's happening. Thank you guys, thanks to the community. INAV 3.0 is really pretty, pretty, pretty amazing and flies great and uh, let's now work hard on the 3.1 but now the list of changes like i mentioned is super long we will not go into the detail if you want to have the exact list of the changes there is a separate live stream when i went almost through everything and also read the release note today today i will get you quickly through the some of the most important changes that i personally think that are the most important you might think it's something else but this is my list so i take the privilege of rendering my own list and show it to you. So let's go. But before we proceed, I'd like to thank all my Patreons and YouTube supporters for their backing. Thanks to you, this channel and uh, INAF development is really possible. So if you are not one of them, please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. And now the promised list of the changes. Number one is the new autotune. New autotune is tuning both the PID and fit forward values, but also is tuning rates. So you do not have to know how fast your airplane rotates before you start tuning. You just let INAF and the new autotune to find it out for just, you know, a better flying experience. Number two are the improvements for the pitch trimming. With previous releases, if you wanted your airplane to fly level with the angle mode and not lose any altitude, you were kind of forced to modify this thanks to the board alignment. You know, add those extra few degrees on the pitch so that the angle of attack is positive and you are not losing altitude. With the INAF 3.0 you should always leave the board alignment at zero so that the flight controller is level with the, with the wings and that's all. Now you have a separate setting called FW level pitch trim which you should use to at those few extra degrees for the pitch trimming. Uh, it's available via the CLI, it's also available uh, in the PID tuning tab, and if, for example, previously you knew that your bore alignment had to be two degrees uh, for the pitch, now you just copy the two over there by remembering that now up is plus. So if you need up trim, nose should be up, you should add positive value, while previously with the board it might have been negative number, depending really on the orientation of that. But that, that's all for the auto level, because we have right now also a flight mode called auto level, which is doing this for you. When you enable angle and the switch called the auto level, the INAF will try to compare if you are losing altitude or gaining altitude and automatically add those extra a few degrees of the angle of attack so you are really flying level and then when you will land you will be able just to copy this value and save the settings so it's there but bear in mind this affects only angle and horizon modes uh, because on the mag acro on the manual and also in the navigation mode it's slightly different story and uh, because navigation modes are already using the barometer, it, there's no really need for use the auto level with the navigation modes. Number three is uh, D-Term is back on the airplanes. With the INAF 3.0, you can use D-Term. Uh, by default, this functionality is disabled. And in case of the some builds, 
weapons, especially those slighter, more agile, this can result in a just a better, more stable tune. However, it's up at this very moment, it's really up to you to find the good values for the D gains uh, for Roll and the Pitch and for the Yaw, of course, uh, because, well, we don't have yet enough of the flight hours to have good initial values. But Autotune will also, is also capable of getting that for you, so maybe this is the option. Number four is, yes, finally, the Turtle Mode. The, Enough is getting turtle mode. If you have the D shot protocol enabled, you can have turtle mode uh, just like in beta flight, emu flight, race flight, and flight ones, and all the other flight controllers. So when you will flip on the relatively short grass, you just and this arm enable turtle mode, flip over, continue flying. How cool is that? Next one is the D shot beeper. Um, no longer to have a separate beeper to have a beeper because right now by default. If you have the D-Shot protocol enables and when the beeper goes off because you either flipped a switch or there is a message from the flight controller, your motors will make a beep thanks to the D-Shot compatible ESCs. Next, pre-arm. Extra safety. If you configure pre-arm flight mode, you have to enable pre-arm to arm. So to switch arming without having to use OpenTX or anything like that for the increased safety. Next, something that long range pilots will love because INAF 3.0 have right now support for the Mavlink V2. So better compatibility with the new Mavlink compatible ground control stations as well as 3.0 supports RC over Mavlink. So you can just fly uh, your airplane or drone, whatever, with the Mavlink protocol configured uh, and send the RC channels via the Mavlink protocol without absolutely any problems. Next, uh, flight performance improvements for the rather equipped airplanes. Right now, INAF will not try to fight with the coordinated turn when you have a rudder. Uh, this right now is solved when the airplane will be banked enough, the item on the rudder will be disabled and the turn will nicely continue without Aina fighting this, uh, this turn because, well, flying wings are so popular and almost nobody flies with the rudder. Okay, it's not the true, but you know where I'm going with that. Uh, also something very interesting for the bigger airplanes. Uh, right now, it's, it will be, it is, it is possible to output the servo channels as the SBUS stream. You can assign one of the serial ports to output SBUS for the external servo drivers, SBUS to servo decoder, or those special super expensive SBUS compatible servos so you can have full 16 of them in your airplane even if your flight controller supports only like three or four S uh, servo outputs. Nice, nice addition, especially for the bigger and heavier and stronger airplanes. Next, uh, DJI OSD. Now it's possible to configure the source of the speed. Uh, by default, up to INAF 3.0, DJI was only displaying the ground speed from the GPS. Now you can choose if this will be a ground speed, GPS speed, 3D speed or the air speed. Just check the release notes of the INAF 3.0 and see how to configure it for us. Uh, compass improvements. Yes, the compass and the compass alignment uh, is now greatly simplified because previously default was not really default. Default was a board specific value. Right now default means 270 flip, which is to be honest the default for the majority of the GPS modules. We just have the magnetometer oriented that this is a 270 flip for the multi rotors because previously those changes were uh, mainly for the fixed wings for the multi rotors gyro processing gyro processing is now better gyro always runs on 4 uh, 4 kilohertz with the pit loop on 2 kilohertz uh, with change the filtering policy 
By default, uh, there is no need to change the anti-aliasing gyro filter and uh, there's only one gyro filter for you to really play with the main gyro filter if you really want to. At the end, the results should be very the same, however, the setup is simplified and it just works better than before. Next, uh, two things I already covered in the separate videos. This is the Smith predictor and alpha beta gamma filtering to just give you extra flippity floppiness factor for your freestyle and racing drones. Uh, and now some of the experimental features I find interesting and no idea if anybody will ever use it, but it's there if you ever had a need to make your INAV make decisions about flights, now you can, because with the INAV 3.0 programming framework was extended with the ability to override the RC channel. What does it mean? For example, for example, you can have the voltage uh, activated return to home. You can have the logic inside of your programming framework that says if the voltage is below 14 volts, change RC channel 7 to value high, which then activates the return to home procedure. So your airplane or drone, when the voltage was just uh, too low, will activate return to home and go wherever it has to go on the return to home. Bear in mind, um, if you mess something up and you make some kind of the infinite loop with uh, this, you can kind of make strange and dangerous things happen um, because you do you are responsible for how INAF will override itself values and for example you without testing you can make a switch that will not allow to turn itself off but it's possible you can have the distance limit, altitude limit, voltage limit, current limit. You can implement basically everything, even your own flight modes if you really, really, really want to. Probably not, but this is always a possibility. Like, for example, I don't know, switch to... Okay. It's really 100% up to you how you will be using this functionality. The next, uh, PID controllers. We love PID controllers and having extra PID controllers is always useful. So with the INF 3.0 programming framework has general purpose user configurable PID controllers. You set the gains, you set what's the set point for the PID controller, you set what's the measurement for the PID controller, and then in the programming framework, you just get the value, the output value returned by your PID controller. So, for example, um, you want to have an extra turret on your thing that will be always pointing north. You connect heading with... Uh, uh, and you want to connect, drive the orientation of the turret with the knob of your transmitter. So you set the knob, set the send points to, to, uh, to heading 0, heading north. You get the measurement to the compass value of the heading. You set the PID and D gains, and you have the output, which then you assign to a servo. So it's just from the top of the my head, but this is basically what you can do. Or for example, you can have the speed controller uh, for your fixed wing. When you have the speed on the knob, uh, speed measurement as the measurement for the input, and the output will be the throttle value for your PI, for your throttle. So possible, possible, but like I said, it's only an option and it's up to you to use it in the correct way. I really do hope somebody will use it because if not, I wasted quite a lot of time developing this thing. And finally, experimental feature, um, ability for INAF to use secondary inertial measurement unit. Right now, only the BNO055 is supported. And if you connect BNO055 via the serial port or the I2C, you will be, for example, able to 
see the artificial horizon rendered computed not by INAF but for by but by the BNO055. Bear in mind there is no documentation yet. There is this highly experimental, and uh, what you can do with the BNO055 I will cover in the separate video because this is kind of big topic and we just don't have enough of the time for it today. And uh, that's all I think because yes my short list is over full list in the github happy flying oh and by the way do you know that i also have a second youtube channel with a slightly different type of the content go there check it out maybe you will like what you see